Hello out there in internet land. This is episode two of The Process Projects. This is called... Dun, dun, Caricatures. Caricatures. So uh, for those of you who uh, were following along last time, episode one was a brainstorming session where we revealed the, the project, which was a illustrated storybook. And we came up with the... Uh -huh. Feel free to backtrack, but we uh, came up with the idea to do a kid robot who's adopted meets a kid monster who has anger issues and is uh, misunderstood. They sort of befriend each other and help each other through some stuff at school. So the homework was to break out some rough characters, uh, just some thoughts, doodles, keep it real loose because we're going to really get into the nitty gritty live. So, Carlos. Yep. What were your thoughts about uh, the characters as after after brainstorming the story? What what spun around in your mind? Well, it was cool because uh, part of my um, part of my video that I did, my homework video that I did, uh, I went and I started a Pinterest board and. I was yeah. breaking things down and explaining to folks how I use Pinterest when it comes to this type of uh, brainstorming. And, and I talked about how I don't necessarily want to steal these folks' ideas, but I do want to use their characters and their artwork to kind of set the tone and set my brain on the right path. So it got to be a lot of fun for me. Um, and then uh, also I was using uh, mischief as my yeah. brainstorming tool because um, I don't uh, I don't really like Photoshop when it comes to trying to figure out characters and stuff just because I always feel like I have this uh, I have this set document size and sometimes the characters just run off the page and I don't want to have to go up and you know uh, make the what you call it the canvas size the bigger, yeah. Whatever. yeah there you yeah. go canvas size uh, bigger so that's why I use uh, mischief and I'm able to you know use that whole infinite zoom thing and it's completely cool yeah uh, yeah other than that you know, uh, I invited you to be a part of the Pinterest page, and then you got in there and you started sharing some of the uh, some of the artwork and stuff, which is really neat because we did have a couple of duplicates, which means that uh, those same drawings and those same characters initiated the same thoughts in both of our brains, which makes for a good time. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think. I think uh, it's a good time to get on board with the reference train and reiterate how important it is to do your research and do your reference. Um, Cause although everybody wants to think that they're completely unique and that they're at the point where they can just create everything um, straight out of their head, I, I don't know that anyone's really to that point. And there's, there's so much stuff out there and it's so good to just have a frame of reference of kind of what works, what doesn't work, what's been done. Um, and Pinterest is a really good place for that. I mean, aside from Google Images and stuff, but Pinterest is a great place to organize it. And, you know, just kind of, you can create a board for your project and only collect stuff for that project. And then of course, Pinterest helps you because it, it uh, gives you suggestions and similar images and stuff. So it's, you can build up a little reference library really quick. So we will be posting the link to the Pinterest page for uh, the storybook on the page so you can follow along. You can rip them off. You can use them in your thing. You can add <laughs> your board. <laughs> you can invite us to your page. Yeah, and, hey, yeah, and, and, uh, 
and if you're cool, you know, if you're you're if you're following along and you want us to invite you to this board, uh, reach out to us and let us know because you know it, it'd be cool to see what you guys think would be uh, uh, a good character or a good a good path to follow when it comes to the characters for this book. Yeah. Um, so we should probably just get right into it and start talking character. Uh, do we want to talk about the robot first? Sure. I think what I'm going to do is uh, share my screen. Yeah, we will jump to Carlos's screen and discuss what he brainstormed. So it looks like he is using Sketchbook Pro. Ton, ton, ton. All right. So we said robots, right? Um, yeah, robots are for me are a little difficult just because uh, they have a tendency to be very um, mechanical, and there's a lot of what's it yeah. called, greeble. There's a lot of <laughs> greeble, um, and I'm not, you know, I, you know, yeah. So, um, so when I was doing the research on the robot. Um, and thinking about the story that we're trying to tell, I would, I don't know why little chunky robots or little chunky kids always seem to be the ones that get picked on. Yeah. I don't know why life sucks. Life is so completely <laughs> not fair. Um, so that's why I started with this guy here. Yeah. And you know, he's got, he's got some personality. Um, I don't know. I was, it, honestly, I was just going to come and and rough out a body type, uh -huh. and then have you. I was ex completely expecting you to come in and beat it up real good. So, um, so you know, like he's got a speaker on the side here. So, so I or think maybe a microphone. Or, I think from like a silhouette, like it works pretty well. If we just kind of squinted and pretended there was no details, I feel like that's pretty solid. And I actually, a lot of my designs came up with a very similar look. Um, I think it it screams kind of the innocence of the character. It's also like a young child, uh, uh, kindergarten, first grade ish body you know so i think it's right. kind of it's kind of hinting at the right age that we're not that it's even a robot doesn't age but that's kind of um uh, i think my first reaction to it is the face is um i think it might be a little hard to emote from it but that might be funny i in my own personal work i kind of struggle back and forth with these like kind of uh little dotty you know just kind of like you have on the robot on the left and, and the right actually just dot eyes because there's something really mm -hmm. funny about that and blank and, and innocent like you can't read them and that works in a lot of situations but i mm -hmm. think I, i'm wondering if if we foresee a lot of like emotional scenes uh or emotional pages that it might be hard like obviously his little hatch mouth can open up and the the shape or the the dilation of the eyes can change and we can obviously fake an eyebrow, but um, I wonder, I wonder how emotive that face is or how, how likable it is. Cause yeah. I actually went through, I went through this, I went through the same process with my sketches and I, I went, did, did a lot of robots and they're cute and a lot of them work. And then I was like, I don't know if it's likable, but that said, so here's here's the one you got mine up. <laughs> so as you can see, like a ton of a ton of mine have a very similar body shape to yours. Mm -hmm. um, kind of the middle the middle row row is where I started, so that was where my brain first went. And actually, you can see the first left three are very similar to yours. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, somewhere in there, I started realizing I got to do something with the eyes, right? I feel like we're gonna need to emote with the eyes and then you know I just just tested some square shapes and some other shapes cylinder and stuff and then about halfway through I'm like well what if we do like kind of a humanish boy that's a robot which you did one as well mm -hmm. um, and I've got a couple of those and I think the upper upper left one upper, upper two left are kind of interesting 
Um, I think the far, yeah, the far upper left one is maybe a little too boyish and a little too human, and it kind of, there is something funny about being able to hide behind the fact that it's a robot and you can't really read it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I like the funny grin on the, the next one over, the kind of Tin Man face. <laughs> it's like hinge mouth. This guy here? Yeah. 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 And the bolt, the bolt nose, which I see you did on yours too, which is kind of, kind of nice. Mine was like a bolt ear. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, okay. So, you want to go into the monsters? Uh, actually, I I wanted to let you know my two favorite are this one here and this yeah. one here. Uh huh. Okay. This one, yes. this one is so incredibly cute. Yeah, there is something really childish and cute about him. Like he's got his head is bigger than his body, and he just is like a bobble-headed kid. And you can do like that, and we can get sponsorship from Apple. <laughs> 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 yep. But no, I mean this guy here. I mean he is so cute. Uh, you almost feel bad that he may or may not be getting picked on. Right, right, which I think is important. I think we do want a character that that uh, not only do you empathize with, but I think you want to feel bad for him a little bit until you realize that he needs to just change his behavior like you can't always. And I could also, you know, the whole thing about him shutting, we talked about he shuts down and he returns home like a Roomba. Like it could, I could picture that being pretty funny with him because he's got such a big head, it'll like fall forward and just kind of be like, down um but yeah. anyway talk about the talk about the wheel one this the guy here you, the other one you chose or no this guy here i like him because his eyes are so expressive yeah um yeah and we can do when i first saw him the first thing i thought was it'd be hilarious to like have a goldfish in there <laughs> <laughs> and then the goldfish just kind of swims back and forth inside his head <laughs> <laughs> just around in circle that's what his brain yeah. operates off of yeah yeah goldfish they're very problem. glassy um i do like the glassy eyes i think i think i'd rather go that route just because yeah I feel like we're headed down some kind of expressive paths and we're exploring anger and innocence and all sorts of stuff. Right. So it may be a little we tough. Can, we can give him like a little pocket. <laughs> you know? So yeah. I'm wondering if we want to try and combine the two and bring, bring back up yours. Cause there were some elements about yours that I kind of liked which is actually similar to my little square head guy. The body. Um, and my, my, I kind of, you can see here yeah. my robot boy. As I was drawing him and I was sketching him out, I was like, man, that looks like Pinocchio. <laughs> Not, it doesn't look like Pinocchio, but, but it's yeah. giving the flavor of Pinocchio, you know? It's um, like a Pinocchio Frankenstein. Yeah. But, yeah, your little chubby guy has a, a body that's like if you took that head and just scaled it up by one and a half or one one point seven five, I think that might immediately make him not only cuter but like kind of young and innocent. I mean, he already. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah see, it's kind of like. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Look at that. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, so what, I'm going to do this. I grab this guy. Yeah, let's grab that one. I wonder if I can edit. Okay. I don't know why I can't just copy and paste, but. Um, hmm. 
All right, I'm gonna bring this guy up here and then I'm gonna erase, oops. Um, I'm gonna turn this guy off. You can't be showing right now. All right. <laughs> that big head thing just completely sold me <laughs> on him. He's, I, uh, kind of, he's kind of like C-3PO's little fat baby. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the so circle good. eyes. Okay. So we got that guy, um, Jack Robots. I'm going to duplicate this layer, bring it up here, hide this guy. All right. Um, and if there's a way to actually copy and paste. I can't believe there isn't it. There might be. Take a look right now. Um, so image, no, edit. See, there's no copy function. That's pretty weird. Huh. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. Um, let's see if I can't hit delete. Dude, I can't even delete. The Sketchbook Pro has got to get that together. Yeah, got to. All right. So for this, I'm just going to. Like that. We need some some erasing theme music. Boop 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 beep boo doo boo boo doo boo 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 that had like a, a doodling music and the... so what do we think about wheels while you're working um i yeah that was one of the thoughts i was having um whoa easy I um think, go ahead i think um there's something that almost makes him <laughs> dare i say handicapped or it kind of uh it kind of limits him and it kind of it exaggerates his difference difference from the rest of the kids even more uh yeah but it severely limits mobility, so it's like if we're gonna have them climbing up in a clubhouse, that's kind of kind of weird. I mean, not that he we can't stage it and he still can't do it, but um, yeah, um, I think it makes him less less believable as a a child baby of like a human parent set it's a little bit more yeah. like you guys bought a Roomba and you liked it so much you you pretend you it's your kid baby's yeah. brain in it right <laughs> rather than opposed to like the one you did aside from the c3po face like uh it's like a little kid and you could totally see it like learning to walk and like walking around the house and opening cabinets it shouldn't be and drinking bleach and <laughs> getting into stuff. Uh, uh, drinking bleach. Yeah, so there's a lot of similarities between these three, which is really interesting. Yeah. Um, the stature, obviously, is the most obvious. It's kind of a short, bobble-headed kid with... Uh, and even the ones, you know, obviously wheels are limited, but even the two that have legs, they're very short and kind of 
cumbersome, like watching that move animated, I think would actually be, <laughs> I could imagine it actually as an animated thing because they're so clumsy looking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start to, uh, Yeah. I'm gonna start to combine some of these ideas. Yeah. So like, um, the one thing that I do like about mine is it kind of, it kind of looks like he's got these little overalls, you know? Yeah, no, I noticed that, and I <laughs> I really like that. It's like a little kid's outfit. Yeah, it's like hinting at at human human people, but not actually being it. Um, which I could also see it added to the middle one. Because yeah, totally. I mean, right now, it looks like he's got a diaper on. <laughs> I think that's a little too too young for what we're going for. I oiled myself. Um, so the the one thing yours does not have is a is hands and fingers. Do we? Yeah. Need, do you think we need posable, uh, posable pieces? Phalanges. It would. It would help while playing. <laughs> See, and now <laughs> he's a different character now. Like, you know, that's funny how quickly that. Now he looks like Mario who put on a robot head. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, Mario's, it's like uh, Mario's robot cap, you know, that he finds in the. Mario dressed up like C3PO for uh, Halloween. Yeah, it's Mario's Halloween costume. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I don't think the hands work on him. So the other thing I was doing were little claws, little C-shaped claws, you know, clamps type of thing. And those yeah, are kind of, so kind of funny. Like, kind yeah, of like. Exactly. That's exactly it. Like Will Robinson. Yep. <laughs> Will Robinson. It's kind of like he can, they're, they're almost like weapons, right? He holds them up and it's like. Yeah. Which is kind of, kind of interesting. Whereas the other two, I don't see them becoming aggressive visually. But now the other thing I remember we talked about is the potential of the idea that the robot can expand, kind of like the monster. Mm -hmm. He can grow. So I, th I like the idea of these hatches that you've drawn uh, that can like pop out and sort of, you know, like I could see, I could see that hatch on his head almost flaring, like maybe if he had another one on either, rather than the speaker, he had like another one wrapping around or something. So it's almost like they flare out like the Jurassic Park dinosaur. Um, I'm, one, I'm, I'm just trying to think of ways like to physically expand him. I mean, obviously he could just pop up his body, his center body piece could pop up and there could be springs under there that, that extend his legs and he can just be a bigger thing. Yeah. Um, so like these might be um so right now i'm kind of bringing this part into that guy right? yeah so he would have these crazy legs these are obviously some kind of piping or whatever and we all we only god knows what's happening under here well that's good we can we can hide a lot of stuff having a so hidden... so kind of him let's say in in the so if we, pose, he might <laughs> he might be <laughs> i think he looks more menacing as a, he looks more menacing small <laughs> right now he looks like somebody's dopey grandma <laughs> 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 so curious if we took out the c3po eyes and put in the the fishbowl glass eyes i wonder if that would be like a perfect combination i think i don't like the antenna every time i've seen it it works okay on the left guy but on my other guys and then when i saw you just draw it, draw it I, I i don't know it seems very all right, so let's hit the plus sign here. So then you said, so do something. So if we put the fishbowl type of emotive eyes. All right. Since if we this is a copy, I'm able to. Yeah. 
before we erase that. Um, so do more. Yeah. Here, even if even if the one on the left, yeah, broke broke profile, so that we know they kind of pop out. Already, I can tell. That's that's. <laughs> <laughs> it does bring a lot more personality to his face. Yeah. Uh, kind of looks. Huh. We're gonna go. We're gonna go deep. <laughs> But that's that's the struggle. That's the thing I brought up at the very beginning. Is like I, there's something I like about uh, masked or mysterious eyes that you don't really know what's going. Like blank eyes, there is kind of something something innocent and yet mysterious about it that they're just kind of because now he now he, he it's almost like he's got an expression on his face. He looks scared almost like he's like whoa i'm looking at you or like really intense and i'm wondering uh Huh. I don't know. I think I like the original ones better. What do you think? Um, can we? I don't know. I, I, I'm digging. I'm digging the glass eyeballs. Let's just try real quick doing the left ones with an expression, like maybe sad or. Uh, I, you, I saw you quickly doodle the angry one, but. Let's do like a a sad or some sort of furled brows so we can sort of see how that mechanism would work. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So sad would be almost like Let's do that. Paintbrush. Because, like, what are the... What's the core of this character? It's like he's a... He's sheltered and he's he's got hover helicopter parents. He's super innocent. He doesn't um, really know how to He doesn't really know how to uh um not express himself, but he doesn't know how to operate in the real world. Right. Just because he's not allowed to. Like that works pretty well, actually. Um, <laughs> he still kind of has this distant. Oh, he, he cries what oil. Yes. <laughs> 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 uh, all right that. well so now we've got a debate over the eyes i don't know i'm kind of digging where this guy yeah not with this because it would be really hard to to pull off this emotion with these eyes 
Yeah, I mean, you'd either have to instit we'd have to institute some sort of eyebrow device, or uh, it would be a real weird break of model. Like if the shape of the glass just changed, like this one does. I think it works with yeah. this. You buy that that shape changes, but the glass or the kind of bulb that yeah, exactly. You'd have to like distort distort the shape or include some sort of eyebrow device. And I don't know if that has the right effect. It's almost like what are his eyes, like liquid jello things? Yeah. Yeah. Or we could totally have, <laughs> we could totally have like a, a screen, a monitor screen. <laughs> <laughs> just prints a sad face, an emoji. It's just, oh, oh. He doesn't want to see the pain. Um, yeah, I so really, that. I, I really dig the shape of this character. Like, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to mine, and we're gonna. I just want to, okay. just kind of see, like, just just doing this this outline like there's something really clean and really uh like that that just works for me as a it's like a little mushroom right <laughs> it's kind of yeah. like there's something super cool about that the one the one concern i have again is just is the uh is the arms and i i think they actually work as this character they visually it's just like oh those are cool but then when i think about applications and, and putting them in the story it gets kind of complicated so I'm wondering if maybe um, you know we have one of these systems where you know something, yeah, could something be, they come out or he's be. got he's got the like uh, the kitchen beater in there you know like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah like I mean it just, could be it could be one of those situations where he has a bunch of those little uh, utensils or apparatus or whatever inside that little container. And then whatever he needs, he just like sucks it up, and then out comes the next device that he's using or the next. Yeah, actually, and like it, he could use it as like a vacuum. It's like <laughs> I don't yeah. know. There's kind of some like funny little gags I could see. Uh, and like you, so because I, I think I think the idea of this handless handless character there's something funny about that and there's something like uh, and it could be it could be a situation where he like gets upset and he pulls his arm out right and you think he's going to shoot one of the kids but a nerf ball comes out and bounces off his head Boonk. right yeah i mean it's like the, what uh, mega man right it's like i think like, the kids may see this and think oh my god it's a gun like you're aiming that at me and then it turns out he just wanted to play and he pops the ball or whatever and that's when the kid makes fun of him like, yeah, you're, you're just a you know you're not tough so the little hatch does that like does that like open up does that um it could be does it go like so? <laughs> yeah, it could be if it needs to be. Like, like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to see, like, if because there's something super uh, <laughs> simple and like monotone about that. I'm like wondering if, and maybe that's cool. Maybe that's funny. I yeah. See, it doesn't. He doesn't deform very well. Like if we want, you can get a little bit of curvature out of it to kind of imply, yeah, smile. But I don't think you want to go. Or we could just use it as an exercise for us to see how we can make yeah. him look happy with just the eyes, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, they're, they're like this is very similar to how I feel about the little dot eyes. Is the mouth? Um, yeah. There's there's funny about it something it's very Jim Henson, right? Like he got so much he gets so much emotion out of those characters with only being able to, you know, open the mouths up and down. The eyes didn't even move unless they were like mm -hmm. bubble eyes. 
Um, so we're thinking the C3PO style eyes. Yeah. After your explanation, I uh, I've given up on the glass eyes. Besides, if you if you uh, if you're glassy eyed, chances are you're drunk. <laughs> So. <laughs> this guy's pretty funny. There's something really kind of funny about this guy. Oh. <laughs> Poor little tank tank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's, I mean, that's, that's another exercise that we can play with is, you know, his excitement level with how his antenna is, is protruding or or drooping, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think though, um, with your drawing on the right, I think he needs a little bit more happening in his face. Yeah, well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. What uh, to keep. Uh, you see that little, or... you see that little panel on the one on the left, that little panel on top. Yeah. What if that was like a, what is that? The 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 solar panel that keeps him charged, right? <laughs> what if it What if it looks like his hairstyle and it's parted down the either down the middle or down the side or something? So not literally a solar panel. We go, yeah, we go like. Uh... That makes him look like a little girl, which could also work. <laughs> well, it could be. <laughs> and the antenna, the antenna is a ponytail. <laughs> yeah. Well, I suppose then then we have to take in the implications of what it means to have a, a little girl uh, hanging around with a beastly monster, and you know anything that anything that happens to this character in the story. If it, yeah, it does make him look like a girl. Or uh, <laughs> it's like one of those weird, like Victorian. It's like <laughs> it's like just add a bow tie, and he's like a little <laughs> he's like a little Victorian man, you know, uh, steam, steampunk boy. Uh, yeah. I like the idea, and I think something like that would have to be pulled off in the color phase, you know, in detailing. Yeah, because uh, clearly, just this doodle sketch is kind of like what the hell is that? It looks kind of. Um, I don't know. I kind of like almost dig what you just have. You know, sometimes like then gut ideas is the best. Like I kind of like uh, what you have here, but just went back to the C three PO eyes, and yeah. Probably, I'm probably not the little happy face on the side or a screw or whatever. That, oh, it's a plug. <laughs> it's a plug. It's a plug. <laughs> we, yeah, we can we can put a plug on his back, or uh, well, we can put a we can put ear. a process. Oh, hey. We can put a process project sticker on him. Yeah, USB <laughs> USB port. Um. <laughs> so, I was kind of thinking. Let's see if we can go pull up your screen again and go back to the one you had where, uh, yeah, that guy. So if we add the add back in the antenna, because I like that and the little the little split down the middle of the face. He's starting to look like Darth Vader a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. <sighs> Because I think the antenna itself actually has some emotion in it, which I, I like. I, yeah. I Ten agree. minutes ago I said I didn't like an antenna, and now I like it. And that's why we have discussions. Because <laughs> we could totally do something like this, right? <laughs> he looks like an old man. George Costanza robot. <laughs> He just has it on the side. He's bald already. <laughs> right. I, I kind of like the shape you have. I wonder if that just is something that um, is indicated as some sort of solar panel in, in the coloring phase kind of detail. Yeah. 
It's pretty funny. I kind of like this guy. I think we should uh, we should put a pin in this and develop it with some color treatments and detail. Cool. Um, so now the interesting part is pairing him with a monster. Cool. Um, okay, so I'm going to hide all of these. That was a lot of fun for me. Um, and then I'm going to turn on your monsters. So I pretty much exclusively went with the idea that he should be furry. I don't, I don't know that it's required, uh, but there's just something about it. I guess I like the contrast since the other character's metal and slick that the other guy should be fluffy. And I also think it's kind of, uh, there's a lot of natural animals that uh, are terrifying, but also fluffy and cute at the same time. You know, like bears and, yeah. and even lions to some degree. And you get these creatures that are, or there's that, you know, there's those dogs that like have the hair that grows over their face. So. Yeah. <laughs> like this guy up here. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of like a Yeti. Like this guy right there. <laughs> yeah. And then, <laughs> again. He reminds me a... He reminds me of that, uh, the old cartoons. Uh, it was a dog. Was he the one that said, which way did he go, George? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Either way. The... Either way oh, the, uh, way. yeah, that's, that's a... Uh... Morning, George. Morning, Ralph. Yeah, that was a dog. Yeah. That was the dog that yeah. was sort of had the air, the hair over his face, and couldn't really. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, there's what? Uh, what was the? I have one in there that looks really similar to the big red guy from from Warner Brothers. Mortimer, I think. Uh, this one here. What was that character's name? Yeah, that's a little similar to that. So. I don't know if I want to get on that route, but which is yeah, funny because I have one that looks kind of weird. Gossamer, that's oh, his name. Gossamer. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna move your monsters. Come on, dude. I'm gonna move your monsters, dude. You're killing me. Uh, and my monsters. Um, I have. It kind of looks like this one. Right, right. Yeah, the only thing is mine has worm arms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I like, I kind of like the idea of him at least being able to, he doesn't always have to walk that way or be posed that way, but I like the idea of him being able to be on all fours, especially since we talked about the one, you know, where where the robots are turning home, kind of in shutdown mode, and I could, I could see the big creature, like, losing his, you know, just pouncing all over the place and kind of becoming very animalistic, and I could see it be kind of, kind of cool that he's leaping around on four, all fours. Um, yeah. That said, most of these could could go on all fours. Yeah, totally. Um, I I like them all, <laughs> which is completely well, unhelpful. Well, I don't. I Except don't want to be the fish. The fish one is, yeah. is not my he's, favorite. That, he's got So go. if I had to narrow it down, he's the first one that would go. Yeah, you can X through him, and we got to X through Gossamer because that's pretty much taken. Well, and I right. don't. <laughs> yeah. And I don't particularly like the one uh, top middle that kind of looks like a, a Maurice Sendak Yeti yak. It's just yeah. kind of that one or the one right next to it, to the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't particularly like those. They're very like yak. Like this one, um, this one, it's, it's, uh, it's funny yeah, it's, in a cool way. It's funny in a cool way that his horn looks like he got his ear pierced. Like, he's that much of a bad boy. He goes to, like, second grade with his ear pierced, and he's wearing a hoop. <laughs> uh, and yet this it's This guy just... reminds me of a panda. 
Yeah, there's something I like about the circles around the eyes. Uh, yeah. And he's he's really big and kind of round and fluffy. Yeah, you can equ equally do dark, dark circles and just the eyes are small openings. Damn you. These pandas kind of look like they should be able to eat people, but they just don't care. They're like, right, right. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of like that about them. Um, but that said, this character does have to have a, an aggressive side that comes out very monstrous. Like I could okay. see. Go ahead. I was gonna say that'd be easy because all we have to do is. I mean, it's just like you open his mouth and it's filled with rows and rows of teeth. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Gosh. And just be like. <clears throat> <laughs> kind of looks like he's constipated. <laughs> I'm unpleased. <laughs> uh, yeah. oh, God, that's silly. Rather than a, why'd you do that? Why'd you let him walk all over you, kid? That's, uh, I disapprove of your behavior, and I'm going back to hibernate. <laughs> <laughs> your behavior is unacceptable. Yeah, he could be panda-ish even in color or a uh, two-tone. Anyway, yeah, out of – I'm kind of digging that guy just because he's big and fluffy and – uh yeah all right so let's take a look at these guys um so we already said no to mortimer oh yeah gossamer is a little gossamer that's right uh and the snake guy, I just he doesn't he doesn't seem monstrous. He doesn't seem like a a big understand bully. And uh, yeah. the one I could and this doesn't count. A, right, right. <laughs> if he didn't if he didn't have a smirk on his face, I could see the one on the upper left. <clears throat> Is that a fanny pack? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like no wonder, kid. Like you're not getting made fun of because you're a monster. It's because you wear a fanny pack. <laughs> I mean, this album right, browser are pretty spectacular too. <laughs> uh, all right, hang on. Let's do this. Let's get my colors up here. I could bend them out at all. There you go. Oh, Grumpy Bear. <laughs> yeah, now he's angry. He kind of looks like a sumo wrestler. I don't know if uh, <laughs> underwear outline is... Yeah, I added the fanny pack because I figured if you're going to get picked on, a fanny pack is a good reason. A fanny pack and jean shorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
What are you thinking, kid? <laughs> yeah, otherwise, that was actually my favorite one of my group. Um, this guy's this guy's horn, his upper head area, I really like. Yeah, I mean the uh, um, the but, criminal must mustache and beard. <laughs> that you know, you know, I when I started drawing him, I was like, he doesn't look, you know, <laughs> enough or whatever. And then I remembered some guys I went to school with. We were in, we're, we're like sophomores or maybe sophomores or juniors in high school. And this guy already had a full on beard. And uh, and I was always n not really understanding how a guy so young could be so hairy. And then I thought to myself, that could be a good reason because we, we used to tease him uh, for being hairy. And we're like, what are you about to retire? <laughs> this, this big grown ass man, and he's still living in his parents' house. Um, so yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Hmm. Well, I kind of. I, I like the panda-ish character. Uh, there's something kind of big and brooding about him, and yet he clearly is uh, a misunderstood teddy bear, as the term keeps going. Yeah. Or, here, let's play. Um, I'm going to duplicate. Here we go. I'm going to try to... Thank you for letting me make a... Nope, that's the wrong one. Thank you for letting me make a selection and copy and paste Sketchbook Pro. Um, I want to... See if we can combine a, a couple few of these. Okay, so because <laughs> the panda, I mean, <clears throat> he has actually pretty good potential to become. Pretty fierce. Yeah. I'm, uh, you know, it looks like he's got a body big enough and a head big enough to support a pretty, like, massive, massive jaw. And, uh, the arms are, he, he, although he's, like, lumped up in a little potato right there, it's kind of like, I could easily see how he could expand into, into fury. As soon as he stands up on his legs and you know ex uh, unfolds his arms and they're out reaching and all that, you know, it's kind of like yeah, he can he can totally get after it. I'm just wanting to see. Okay, why is this taking so long? So, like, if I did, you know, if we did something like. Are you sharing? Yeah. Okay. So oh, you know, yeah, some, something like that, where it's like he could he could easily unfold himself and become kind of. Yeah, totally. Um, see what he would look like with with the horns from the dude with the full on beard. Jesus, foaming at the mouth. <laughs> it's supposed to be some like color, yeah, some coloring around. Yeah. The... So, uh, sorry, what'd you say? The horns from who? 
the horns from from uh, from my guy from, from ah. my guy with the goatee. And maybe, maybe he just has these little tiny horns, but then when he gets angry, these horns just come out. <sighs> ah, and he just gets completely scary. I mean, the ones you kind of had were just like that, but we could. They could. Yeah, he looks like an amazing angry dude right now. Like those could, the horns could just like grow, you know. No. His elbows could get hairier, you know. Got some slobber. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Pass me my Legos. Um. <laughs> like us. Uh, yeah, I can go either way. I can go either way. What do you mean? Either way. Horns are not horns. Oh. I kind of would like, uh, I think I like what your, your original idea was. It's like um, they could start, you know. So... Um, it's like they could be, oops, they could be like even little cute teddy bear stumps, <laughs> you know, but then it's like, but then he gets angry and, you know, they come out and they're the, they're the monster. Yeah, because if they if they come out real big like that, he just looks terrifying. Which is a complete, completely different animal than the little timid guy that's just sitting there. You know. Yeah, I, I mean, and and this is probably... <laughs> the little stumps. <laughs> Those are gonna be cute on him when he's you know when he's just sitting here as a this little guy. He's got, instead of the ears. He's yeah. got the little, the little, the little stumps. So yeah, we can go back to you now. No, yeah, that's it. That's it. No, that um, was that was my idea. I like it. Cool. So now that we're in the doodling mode and we kind of have a general idea of where we want each other to go, we've got some ancillary characters that I think might be interesting to flesh out. Um, what they would look like. Mm -hmm. we, got the, we got the parents, and then, you know, there's obviously other kids, but are, are they just kind of your average middle school big headed brats, or are they. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, they could just be completely normal kids. Um, just like they, they kind of always are. You know how it's funny how life is where uh, people that try to be so completely different always fit into the group that's different. <laughs> and then the the kids that are that just not necessarily trying to be different, they're just living their life. They're liking what they like. They do what they like to do they end up standing out in a crowd just because yeah, they're totally. trying to be normal just because they're normal, yeah. you know they're they're trying so hard to you know to fit in yeah and uh they end up standing out and like you said vice versa so like are we thinking like generic Generic parents that are. <laughs> yeah. That's. Oh, that makes me look like a grandma. She's kind of the. Yeah. 
you know, <laughs> they got, you know, you've seen that thing on Facebook with the, the Kylo Ren thing from Star Wars where it's like the family photo. It's like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little mushroom kid. I was right. gonna say, just show. I was gonna say, just show the antenna from the bottom coming from the bottom <laughs> because he's just too short to make it into the picture. Make it into the picture. Yeah, it's like. Well, yeah, you could totally just. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. So, we could do brown parents. We could do. We could do green you know? parents. We could do. Uh... <laughs> oh, actually, yeah, that's that's a uh, that's an interesting. We could we can make them be, I don't know. Just, just, just dark enough to not be like, oh, you know, eh, they always have to be white parents. But then we can make them light enough to where they have good credit. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> oh man. Uh, um, yeah, I see what you did there. <laughs> you know, and then you got the the more culturally androgynous hair shape and and face uh or we can do who was it wasn't it uh tom and jerry who never showed yeah, yeah you just I, and i always found something kind of funny about that it was mm -hmm. like you really focused on that it's a children's world and the, the yeah. parents are, and that actually could work to our benefit in this because you know obviously it's mostly kids but you know even even with the big even with the big panda with the little nubs <laughs> so even him you know standing next to his new buddy uh like that's <laughs> That's like a clear dynamic and interaction. So it's like, you know. <laughs> Dude, that is so now, funny. It's like, now, now robots on. I'm telling you. What are you guys doing? He's got, he's got to have gloves on. Just kidding. You know, I don't know what you think you're doing. But go to your you room. Bust up your room, you big dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Or it's, you know, but then and then on the flip side, I think the other thing that I want to consider is uh, is the monster parents because you know it's like how much do we actually see them and if we're you're starting you're starting to get robot voice. Am I good? Yep. Um, the other thing I want to consider and that I think is is the is the monsters parents and like how much we actually see them because. You know, we talked about having them fight off screen or like uh, kind of in the background where you're sort of witnessing it from the robot's point of view or something like that. And then the quite the real kind of ultimate question is, is do they show up in the end and do we want to um, do we want to go ahead and move forward? Do we want to move forward with the idea that that the kids are uh, that the monster is some sort of like figment of of the robot's imagination or can sort of imply that. And I think if we have the monster parents perhaps never actually show up at the, at the climax at the end, that could sort of leave things open. And it also reinforces who they are as parents. Like that's kind of the way he is. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've been, I've been trying to figure out that, like, what is it that happens? And, um, Part of me wants the these kids. When I say the kids, I mean the robot and the yeah. and the monster. Yeah, I want them to figure it out. Yeah, I think and that's kind of the similar thought I had. Is I think, I think after they get into a fight and they end up hurting each other, I think 
in a way, that's kind of a realization to both of them that it didn't have to go that far and that they both, you know, took their personality traits too far. And then it's kind of like, it's kind of, it's kind of like the, the human parents show up more as, uh, just kind of the final closure thing, like, oh, are you okay? And it's kind of like, um, that's when we can sort of reveal that they, sh it was good that they let him figure it out on their, well, they didn't let him, but it was good that he figured it out on his own, right? And then he ran away and then he kind of took a step away from his parents. So I, I, I don't necessarily have a problem with the fact that they show up, but I don't know that you want it to be like, they show up and that's what causes the resolution. Yeah. Uh, um, I was, <laughs> my brain went back to Fight Club. So let's say there's this big, uh, this big, uh, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? The, this big fight that's about to happen and the robot goes to swing, but then he like punches him in the face, punches himself in the face. <laughs> <laughs> And then he wakes up and he's like, and you know, the monster is gone and everything. So it's like this big reveal that happens when, when, uh, when you think Fight Club. Uh, that's dumb. I just needed to get that thought on that <laughs> in my head. <laughs> I mean, that would make it very clear that uh, the monster doesn't exist. And yeah, um, yeah. For me, I think trying to figure out the ending is going to make a big deal. Do we need to see the monster's parents? Not really. Uh, simply because the story is not about the parents. Um, and they're if they're always arguing, they're probably always either sending the kid to the room, the monster kid to his room, or he goes into the room to avoid being in that interaction between his parents um you know kids whose parents always fight generally like to stay out of it they like to stay in their room where it's safe um and that and i think that's that's um it would be easy to get away with having the monster's parents not being around because they're not around they're always fighting and they're always after their own ideas and such right and that's kind of that's kind of the thought that i had that that it's it's nice to introduce them in the in the portion where we see their house and their uh their environment and kind of what where the monster came from but it's kind of like i don't i don't really know what what benefit they bring to the resolution because it's it, it seems weird that they would just show up and change who they are right they're, they're, nothing has happened to them that like this seems like pretty regular behavior around the monster household right um so yeah i kind of think hmm. And if we wanted to go super deep with this, um, the monster's parents are the actual struggle between uh, the thoughts that the robot is having, right? And and the manifestation of those is the monster. Does that make sense? So. Uh... The, the thoughts the thoughts that that uh, the robot is struggling with and fighting with himself yeah um, you know that is the 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 monster's parents you know am I good am I bad am I this am I that am I real am I fake am I a boy am I a robot that's true um, all that, of those thoughts. True. The representation of those thoughts are the 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 monster's parents. So, if we think about it like that, then you know no one can really see your thoughts until you put them down on paper. The way he puts he quote unquote puts his thoughts on paper, he he manifests this this uh, uh, monster. 
right? And then if we want to go into the, the natural world of monsters, you have a mom and dad monster and they make a baby monster and there you go. So all of that is just, all of that is just to, to reiterate saying the thoughts are the monsters, parents who are in this constant struggle with each other. Yeah. They're trying to figure out, am I a robot? Am I a boy? Do I go to school? Do I stay home? Uh, you know, even even something as simple as do I continue to talk to this monster or is he real or fake? Or do I can, or whatever the I just tripped over myself. Um, do I continue to talk to this monster or do I realize that he's fake and I stop talking to him? So this constant inner inner dialogue that's happening, this this conflict that's happening within the robot's brain. Um, basically is the monster's parents right yeah i know I, I mean i totally see that that connection and i i, I guess my and, and i think that's going to be there kind of no matter the, no matter what way we write it and no matter what way we slice it it just kind of is is leaning that way and it's already implying that because we're because we kind of start with the robot as the lead and you know we're following his mm -hmm his adventure and like how he meets, you know, this character and we don't really delve into, I mean, all of the monster may change his character a little bit. Uh, it's not, it's not as drastic as, I mean, the monsters kind of already learned that, learn what kind of behaviors get him. Yeah, I think. Or you could, or um, I, I'm looking at you drawing. You can totally have the little guy on the monster's back, kind of like uh, what was it, Thunderdome? When the when the little midget dude, or I, I don't know if you if you can say midget anymore. But, <laughs> um, the the there's this tiny dude who was on. He was in a saddle and he was riding this big monstrous <laughs> guy into to fight mad max and, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah. remember yeah yeah anyway uh i just saw your drawing and, and uh that's that's where my brain went um yeah he's kind of <laughs> Kind of getting this like Totoro <laughs> feel to him, which is kind of, you know, everybody loves their cute Totoro. And there is something kind of appealing about the way Japanese draw little creatures. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think I think what you were getting at was was spot on. I think I th I think that the monster's parents are really more of just um, an amplification of who the monster is, and then, like you said, furthermore, kind of a reflection of what he's dealing with with his parents. And although his parents have never been abusive to him and never been, you know, neglectful per se, uh, it's still his thoughts about being an adopted robot and you know, what these parents really mean to me and what have, what have I learned to them and, and when, when do I step away from my parents? And it's kind of, it's exactly like you said, it's, it is totally symbolic of, of his inner conflict. So I don't think we need, to, we definitely don't need to introduce them again at the end. I guess the, the question is, is do, do we get any of the parents involved at the end? Um, or is it something these two kind of resolve on their own? Like, man, I, I hurt you. That's not cool. And they kind of walk off to the sunset together or they're, you know, um, I, I just, I, I still feel like it's, it may be missing, missing. It's like little final step. That's like, yeah, yeah, we, we yeah. hurt each. Yeah. We hurt each other and yeah, I'm sorry. And yeah, we both pushed our, pushed it too far, but it's kind of like, um, it's almost like it needs to be where their um, 
their anger gets them into a situation that they need to get out of. And then when they figure out that they can work together. Yeah. Uh, that's when they find that, that balance that people need. Right. Yeah. So would it be something like stand by me where they find a dead body in the, in the <laughs> uh, is uh, it something where like one of them goes to run off and he runs away and the other one chases after him and you know there's this bridge that they fall through kind of thing um th that's where it becomes um that's where my brain hasn't figured out yet a, a good interesting way to make some sort of danger happen to where they need to where they snap out of their silliness and they learn to work together yeah i mean i think i think where we have it headed it works really well so far and i think that they can still after you know the monster goes off and hides because his parents are arguing and the robot comes to fi find him i still think they can get into a fight and then that's what spawns this sort of i think maybe their fight should lead them to really i mean i think we should really 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 amplify the aggression and the chaos and they should like actually travel locations you know it's like one starts tra chasing the other and it's it's just a path of destruction behind them which would allow us to not only illustrate extreme aggression and violence but it also gets us to a place where that you know that trouble for both of them is introduced some outside trouble and then one of them has to help the other or they both help each other um i think it i think it could be interesting if if part of the solution is well part of the solution is dialing down the aggression obviously because they have to work to it with each other but all right so this is my dumb brain <laughs> they're fighting the robot jumps on his back they stumble into thunderdome <laughs> <laughs> fight 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 uh yeah but that it's actually a jungle gym <laughs> it's a ball pit <laughs> <laughs> ball pit yeah, they have the, they, yeah they fall into the ball pit at the local mcdonald's where it's just a <laughs> fight against all the germs that are in the ball pit and then, and then all the kids think that the monster is grimace and they're trying to get them to sign their happy meal bags or whatever oh. um i like i like the thought that they get into some external trouble or you know that their fight leads them off the edge of a cliff or nearly off the edge of a cliff or off a bridge or something. I, I'm trying to come up, I'm trying to come up with something that, that visually kind of represents our story anyway. Um, yeah. That represents kind of, um, well, growing up obviously, but kind of introversion versus extroversion and kind of the standing up and being an adult type of thing. I'm trying to think of a physical location or a, structure or object that sort of represents that yeah um we're close though i know we got stuck on this last time but i think it's i think well we've weeded out the fact that we don't need the parents involved which i think is probably smart and i think it's a little it's a tidier ending yeah and I mean, because yeah, if, if the robot is dealing with overbearing parents, it doesn't make sense to have the parents save the day again. Right. Right. Um, that said, the, the ending is a little bit about balance, right? So perhaps it's, uh, I mean, in a way, not only are we talking about introversion versus extroversion, we're talking about freedom versus, you know, supervision or security. So I think, I think some of it could be that he ventures, like part of this aggression in his fight with the monster is, is an exploration of his own freedom and really letting loose and just kind of 
breaking every rule. So I think we could, because we want to kind of end with a balance rather than the opposite, it could be something that the monster can save the robot um, and that he has to allow him to save it, but it has to be on his terms. You know what I mean? It has to be... Um, a bridge is, of or, course... Go ahead. Or the robot has to help the monster because the robot needs uh -huh. to find his independence. Uh, and stop being the, the greedy service taker from his parents and provide a service for others. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like a good little robot slave. <laughs> um, yeah, that could be, that could be interesting. He could just totally lose it. Like that actually would be a great series of images, these two fighting and how big the monster is compared to him. And yet I think the robot, the robot is sort of winning cause he's really just unleashing and yeah. he ends up, you know, the monster falls off a bridge or a cliff or something. And that, suddenly snaps in like, oh my God, I'm about to kill my best friend, my only friend. Mm -hmm. And then, so it's up to him to, to save, to save his friend. I mean, that's kind of a nice, a nice ending. Uh, I'm just, I still would love, love for it to be something visual that represents, I mean, a bridge of course is always poetic, right? You know, it's, connecting of two different sides, it's traversing over a chasm and all that stuff, but it might also be a little cliche. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering if we want to return to the schoolyard and kind of have something in the lunchroom or the school that kind of... Or, <laughs> I mean, it would be, it would be kind of funny and almost the tip of the cap to to Mad Max where where they do go into the jungle gym and that's where the struggle is happening they're inside right. this well that's <laughs> exactly no that's why I was saying well because originally the kids are picking on him right so they could end up back at school at the jungle gym and the kids gather around and are cheering fight 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 right and so that just amps them up like oh my gosh and in an in a interesting kind of twist that also implies that this may be one of their chances to dump their friend and befriend the popular kids, right? It's kind of like if I win yeah. this, but then uh, obviously they realize that. That's and all the kids, all the kids are sitting on the jungle gym watching this thing. So it's happen. like one of those dome, and one of those so geodesic dome jungle gyms, and that the yeah. monster and the robot are inside, and all the kids are piled on top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's kind of yeah. cool. Like and then, that. and then, like maybe, the, maybe the robot or one of them is trying to get out. I don't know which one yet. One of them is trying to get out, so they're trying to climb to the top. And that's where, instead of falling off of a bridge, that's where it's going to happen. Where one of them is about to fall off the top of the jungle gym. Make sense? Yeah. Um. I'm trying to picture one of those geodesic dome jungle gems. Is it really tall enough to warrant that much fear, though? Yeah. Yeah, especially when you're a kid. I remember people fell off that damn thing, and it was not... I mean, it's one of those big monkey bar ones um, where it's, like, what was it, 10, 15 feet high? Was I it? mean, we can, of course, always exaggerate it for the, for the purpose of the story I'm just trying yeah. to think of I guess because of how big we're kind of drawing the monster it seems weird if so are they on the outside of the dome or I say they one of them maybe runs into the jungle gym thinking that he was going to be safe um, so here I'm gonna share my dome so you're talking about one of these, right? Yeah. See, because yeah. I guess I guess even when I think about these big ones, you know, our monster, I feel like he's gonna fill up most of the space, and him falling, <laughs> him falling just doesn't seem threatening at all. So either we need to 
really exaggerate the size of this thing, which we could do. You know, like we this is pre- like this is pretty big. I mean, that's not a children's playground. That's like Burning Man or something. But yeah, those are the ones that I remember. Um, but then again, I was a kid when no one. Yeah, if you're an idiot and you fell, then you just were dumb. Uh, whereas now they everything is made out of padding and stuff. So um, I mean, I mean, I really love the imagery that it's creating uh, of like a cage fight. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and and it it immediately asks for all of the kids to gather around and you know spectate yeah. over the, the two. Really, I mean, it's just kind of the robot f- figuring himself out uh, metaphorically and thematically, but. Um, and it's his imagination that where he's fighting with the with the monster. So in his imagination, that the monkey bars or the jungle gym can be way bigger, as, right? Yeah. So then the question is: is if it's just his imagination and kind of he's working this out, uh, why would he save his imaginary partner? Like, why wouldn't he? The kids are all cheering for one of them to win, don't you think? Did you think the kids would affect it? Like, if we're saying that the monster is visible, whether it is or not, wouldn't the kids want one of them to win? Because that's how a spec- you know, spectacle works. They want a winner. So wouldn't the robot want to come out as the winner? Why would he save him? I guess is kind of the thought. Um, or is it more like I don't want to give into this this spectacle? Well, you know how I remember when I was growing up, um, my brother and I would get into fights, and for a split second, man, I, I hated him, and I and I wanted to kill him, um, but then when I hurt him, I felt instantly bad. Right. <laughs> um. And yeah, so it might be one of those things where uh, yeah, and I don't even I'm trying to figure out because if if the robot is struggling with his imaginary friend, how are the other kids gonna see? So maybe he has imaginary other friends that are in there with or his imaginary friends like little monsters and little whatever else is are watching um and then maybe maybe that maybe the monster does fall and maybe the monster does get hurt and that's when the robot realizes that whoa you know that's my guy my buddy is hurt and that's not cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much explanation it really does need. I mean, it's kind of like your your buddy gets hurt. You immediately feel bad, and you're like, what were we doing? No. Yeah. Uh, or while the the monster is falling he's saying ah, but then you know right before he plummets to his doom the robot has like reached out and grabbed him and and like then pulls him up and like i'll never let you go imagination <laughs> yeah I mean, kind what, of, what I mean, was it? There's a there's a uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone movie called uh, Cliffhanger, I think it is, where there's this rope and he's trying to save this lady's life and he gets her just in the nick of time, but her hand is sweating and he doesn't right. have the energy to pull her up. She don't let go, but then she like like her glove is still in his hand, type of thing. Um, and then she plummets to her death and, and, uh, yeah, (laughs) she plummets to her death. That's, (laughs) 
and all the and all the bad little children are cheering him on. Yeah, kill him, kill him. <laughs> Yay! Fine. Oh, yeah, all these bloodthirsty children. <laughs> I mean, kind oh, of, kind of. It's like, ha! Ah, someone's getting hurt, right? Um, obviously, we're not gonna do the Iron Man laser beam, but um. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I was like, yes, the Predator three, three laser sighting thing. Predator no, I mean that's pretty solid. I like. I really like the cage fight. <laughs> 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 because it's like a perfect it's, it really is a perfect analogy it's like you're going to you have to face your your creation your 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 enemy your worst demon you know you're stuck yeah. in here and and everybody's cheering because they want to see how it turns out you know it's like <laughs> it's yeah. kind of funny it's funny and yet it's and also all of a sudden all of a sudden the little kid joe rogan comes out and starts doing the the announcing because Joe Rogan is a <laughs> UFC announcer. <laughs> this giant microphone. The monster comes out with a big belt over his shoulder. <laughs> no, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, cool. Well, is it time for homework? So I think um, one of the obvious uh, obvious things is to clarify the characters a little bit, get some. Um, and I don't know how you want. If it, this is again one of these questions that I think anybody working with a team is going to face, and they're going to. If you're at a company, obviously it's a little more structured on who does what and who's the character designer and who does this. But you know, if you're in a small team and you're just a group of creatives, it, it kind of becomes tricky when you have two different styles and stuff. So I don't know uh, how you, what your thoughts were about how to split up work or how to combine work and make it look seamless. Um, is it um, worth is it worth both of us designing both characters? Uh, I think, it'd it, I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be fun to do that. Um, yeah, I think just so. to see. Um, but I think, I, I mean, if we wanted to be, uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a go at both of them. Yeah. Um, just because I think it would be fun, but also, you know, if if we're gonna tear it down in half, I think. Um, by the robot being picked and the panda being picked i think it's just i mean yeah and that, I mean, was, it did. And that was complete accident too so, <laughs> um so it totally i was. think it's really cool i think it's really cool that that happened so let's let's both go at it at both yeah. characters and then well i think the there's something, there's something that maybe go there's ahead. totally something to be learned i think by seeing someone else design your character or your vision and i think we can there's a lot to be gained from that uh i mean kind of how we how kind of how we what we gained from this first round kind of we've learned things that we did similarly we would learn things that didn't didn't work from each of ours so it will be interesting to see how each of us kind of come up with each character mm -hmm. but yeah i mean i i think it is kind of funny that if we happen to pick one from each side <laughs> Um, and maybe that's the way it gets split up. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe we try to. And the funny thing is, try to combine it. I I felt much better about my monsters than I did my robot. <laughs> <laughs> and I am not gonna lie. I'm not just saying this for the podcast. I totally loved some of my robots and felt good about it. And was like, I mean, the monsters are fine, but. <laughs> <laughs> The idea is just kind of evolved, you know. It's like you saw, because that was the, but that was the other thing is that I liked some of my robots, but wasn't wild about my monsters. But even though, as much as I liked the robots, I couldn't see, I couldn't see them pairing together. I couldn't see uh, any of the monsters I designed with any of the robots. And I was like, oh man, I hope he comes up with something because. <laughs> <laughs> 
Because <laughs> I don't know why I, I can't come up with something that kind of works together. You had, you had a lot more characters than I did. And that's what I was saying to myself. Uh, God, I hope he comes up with something. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, it goes to show you how, because I didn't really like the robot that we picked until we I didn't had the bigger. I didn't either. Like, uh, you first showed me, I was like, he's cute and he's funny, but I don't think he fits this role. And then, like, the more we messed with it and talked about it, I was like, oh, it's totally this kid. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> Just to show you, anytime you're struggling with a, uh, an art yeah. piece, folks at home, make the head bigger. <laughs> <laughs> well, and twice on the same character, I was like, he's got to have hands. I don't like the stub hands. And then I went, went back, I was like, no, I like the stuff hands, and I was like, I don't like the antenna. I, the antennas are weird. And then it's like, ah, oh, I love the antenna. <laughs> uh, so good. So I think we should both do like full character treatments, you know, full color treatment, thoughts, kind of like a. It could still be loose and sketchy, but I think it should essentially be like a complete thought. Spoiler um, alert: the monster is going to have a fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> on, one, on one of my renders, he's going to have a fanny pack. <laughs> I can totally see that. I can totally see him rocking a fanny pack, that big old dude with the... That's funny. It's like Hulk Hogan always walked around with one. I, yeah. Uh, <laughs> do we want right, to add so, anything in terms of uh, sets, environments, or ex you know, extra characters? Or do we want to really solidify these guys out and then build build the cast later? Yeah, I say, I say, let's. Oh, we said that we're we're not going to deal with the parents. Why don't we deal with the parents at least a little bit, like some slacks and some shoes and stuff like that, just to. Yeah, I think it would be funny to if we're not we're not so focused on the faces. Obviously, that gives us a lot more leeway. Yeah. Um, and clearly, the human parents are fairly generic. Um, I mean. There's only so many ways you can draw. And then maybe just maybe just uh, sketching out some kids too. Yeah, totally. Because there's going to be a lot of background kids, and I think their expressions yeah. and the 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 vibe that they put on each situation, like when they first get picked on and then the cage fight. I think all that stuff is totally is going to be important to see the surrounding kids' expressions. And maybe do we? I was going to say, do we want to bring the cage into it a little sooner in the story, too? Oh, totally. I think I think it could be foreshadowed in that they're playing on it and, you know, somebody gets pushed off. Maybe maybe that's how the robot first gets. He, he's climbing out of having a good old time. Like, this is fun. And then one of the other kids kicks him off. Like, I'm the king of the mountain. And that's when the monster, monster steps in and is like, what are you doing to my buddy? And Or maybe they have, maybe they have recess. And they're yeah. messing around, and and the kid gets invited into, and, and by invited I mean forced to go into the death match, and he gets <laughs> his ass whipped, and then the kids are like, "You're not even a real kid." Da, 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 da. And then now it's lunchtime, and he's the robot goes to have lunch, and no one likes him because he just got a beat out. Um, so Maybe. then that's when he goes and he sits at the table and that's when he meets the monster. Cause I really like I really like the idea of him being so completely lonely and he meets the yeah, monster there. That's true. Um Yeah, maybe maybe uh he, he goes out to play by himself. He thinks it's fun to go play on the, the jungle gym and that's when he kinda gets either beat up or kicked off or yeah, that would be a good time to to foreshadow and kind of, you know, it's the place where where kings are made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah. All right. Like well, it. that was uh, that was a wrap. We had that was fun doing some characters. Yeah, fun. So so there. For those following along, we will include the few little links of things we referenced, including some great reference to Jungle Gyms <laughs> and <laughs> some
Tom and Jerry Headless Parents, and our, of course, the Pinterest page, which we encourage everyone to not only check out, but to build of their own. Yeah. So this was episode two of the Process Projects characters. See you next time. Bye.